We're very happy to be here uh, in the second month of uh, our office hours and very happy to see you all. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Um, and we have a few topics to discover. Thank you also for uh, putting your questions in ahead of time and uh, that you want to cover. We will be um, going over the AMA later on uh, in the uh, office hours and, and, and we'll go ahead and uh, get those answered as, as well. So we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> uh, get started. Um, we have Andrew here. Uh, thank you, Andrew. We uh, we also have um, our special guests here, uh, Matt, Matthew Barber, uh, Daniel is here, and, and we have uh, some folks with uh, expertise that are going to be able to help me out here. Um, so uh, let's let's get that rolling. All right. Um, I just want to go ahead and, and talk about uh, what we have today. Um, we'll do the introduction. Some of you guys ha um, attended um, last month and, uh, and, and and individuals who were not able to attend last month, um, welcome. And uh, we will be sharing the um, recording uh, at, in, in the next few days. Uh, so last uh, month's recording was shared. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh reshare that in a chat um after uh, after our, during our ama so in this uh, session we will be talking about uh, the updates that were recently released for power platform cli our august release um we have an update for github actions for power platform and we'll go ahead and have an open forum for ama and and we want to have that discussion going hey i've got I just want yes, to add sir. one more thing. I know, I know you you've mentioned Power Platform CLI. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just as a show of hands, how many folks here actually do FNO development as well, along with Power Platform? Just if you can just raise your hand on the on the thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. Thanks, Ralph. <laughs> I know I can always <laughs> count on you. <laughs> uh, the reason why I say that is because we've got Peter Valatson also on the call here. And we just released a public preview for the unified development environment, or which was formerly known as uh, the internal name was One Dynamics One Platform. It's not necessarily one platform, but uh, the public preview is officially out. Uh, and if you are uh, FNO doing FNO development, uh, you can now build applications uh, with your FNO data on the Power Platform environment. So please check it out uh, and give us feedback as well. Uh, we are. We're we're looking forward to any any kind of comments that you have regarding that. So thank you. So, so, I'll hand so, it back to you, but I want to make sure I say that. But before you do pass it back to Shafkat, uh, let <laughs> let me just say that that I am here. I have um, I have sent Shafkat a two or three slides uh, so that he can fit that in whenever he uh, whenever he wants to. I see that it wasn't on the actual agenda here, but but I am certainly here to talk about it, uh, Shafkat. So. If you give me half a chance, I, I will do that whenever you feel it's appropriate. Yeah, my apologies. Um, I yes, you will have a time. We have included you in a uh, AMA section of the uh, okay, uh, good, our agenda, and yep. we'll we'll have that open discussion. Take it away, man. I'm I'm all standing right. by. All right. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Karthik. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's make sure that uh, we are here making sure that we are only dis, uh, discussing a, a non-NDA material. Uh, this is strictly for Power Platform uh, Developer Tools Forum, um, and, and it's open. Um, there is, uh, it's open forum uh, for everybody. Um, we want to hear any challenges that you're uh, uh, running into with uh, Developer Tools, Power Platform, uh, ProDev. Uh, we want to uh, discuss ideas and uh, get some comments. Uh, <clears throat> is everyone okay? Okay. So uh, I want to make sure that uh, I share how often we do this. This is for um, our community members who are new this time. Um, this is uh, this office hours uh, for developer uh, power platform uh, pro dev tools is held once a month 
and that is every third Thursday of the month, um, except uh, U.S. Uh, holidays. And this is held at 11, between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. Pacific time, which is Redmond, Washington time. Um, in this uh, office hours, uh, the structure normally is that we will talk about the uh, release and normally it happens right after the re uh, release uh, for PAC CLI, uh, which is a Power Platform CLI. So I will be referring to PAC Power Platform CLI as PAC CLI. Um, so this normally, uh, our office hours normally happen right after uh, our release for Power Platform CLI. Um, it gives the opportunity to share with our community what new things that uh, we just released. We want them to try it out, and any preview features, any new features that we are sharing. Um, and uh, we will be implementing, or actually we will be integrating all of that and releasing uh, these uh, features the uh, supporting in Azure DevOps um, build tools for Power Platform, as well as the GitHub actions for Power Platform. Um, and then we'll go and, and talk about uh, any ideas and discuss any questions that were pr pr previously submitted. Um, we'll also have and during the call, you can we'll we'll share the link uh, for AMA. You can submit your questions and we'll have the open discussion. Um, so I'm excited to share with the new things that we just released. Uh, some are in preview for Power Platform CLI. Um, we have uh, introduced a connections um, noun, what we call, um, and, and that is uh, that lets users go ahead and, and uh, work on Dataverse connections using their service principle uh connection and with that you can create the connection you can update you can list um and you can delete um we call these verbs so how the format works is with power platform cli is um we type pack once instance all in a for example in a command line uh pack and then we have a noun which is what we're doing is whether it's an admin task or um, any any of the nouns um, or organization uh, or environment and then we have a verb um, this, after the verb we will have the uh, properties that are associated to that verb um, so here uh, we have introduced the connections where you can go ahead create update list and delete uh, connections okay um, another one with a, another popular demand. Uh, there, there has been uh, I actually, question. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, I'm just going to I'm just going to explain some stuff here too. Of so course. when we talk about connection in particular, this is only for Dataverse connection mm -hmm. uh, connections. Um, Andrew, do you want to just further clarify exactly what the Dataverse connection part yeah. means, please? Uh, yeah, it's just connection to Dataverse because uh, what users had before the issue was uh, you have to create a fake flow to create service principal connection to Dataverse. And uh, we had many requests for people who, especially who managed a connection with service principles, uh, uh, because you need to provide a secret and uh, it, it yeah. was very difficult to create, right? Exactly. Uh, so now actually it uh, fits well with uh, pack create service principle. So you can run pack create service principle, it would create service principle, and you can use that service principle to create a connection to a database. And then you can use that connection and, uh, and, and, yeah. and I do want to emphasize the fact that as you as you just heard Andrew, you know, this is this is specifically for the dataverse data right. store, all right? This is yeah. not for custom connectors or anything of that sort. It is purely for dataverse. Because I know yes. I know the first set of questions that we I've already seen already so far uh regarding uh the pack connection command is that is it it's is it for custom connectors as well? We plan to go do that. Don't get me wrong. It's it's just taking time, but this is our first step towards it, which is why this capability is in preview right now. Okay. Yep. Great point. Thank you, Karthik. And we'll yeah. continue to listen to feedback, and uh, we'll uh, add more, as Karthik said. We'll continue. I'm working on. Yes. Yep. And yeah, thank you, Andrew, for clarifying, and thank you, Karthik, for bringing point. It's a great point. Uh, so yeah. Having that clarified, um, another popular ask um, we've had, uh, we've heard from our community that, you know, they want to be able to update the tenant settings. They want to be able to 
list their tenant settings. So when a user is connected to an environment, dataverse environment, and uh, they want to know information for their tenant, right? Uh, instead of going through all the cumbersome process to go through the UI and try to figure out all these, uh, again, it becomes tedious and, and, and time consuming. We're bringing this capability right here onto the command line in PAC CLI. Um, they can go ahead and, and do PAC admin list tenant settings. They'll get the JSON file. They will provide the JSON file. They'll get the uh, JSON file of all the tenant settings that are available. Um, they can go ahead, turn off, on, true, false, you know, all these different uh, flags. They can go ahead and uh, update whatever's allowed. And then they can go ahead with the next command, which is the update tenants, tenant settings. Um, as long as they have access, they should be able to go ahead and update those tenant settings with their updated JSON file. So that's another uh, exciting feature that we're bringing in. Uh, Karthik, you'd like to say something? Yeah, uh, so again, one of the key things is uh, the use case for these kind of th uh, these kind of things. I know some of you already know, but I'm just going to go ahead and belabor the point here a little bit. For example, uh, this came in when Andrew and I were trying to go do some, I think it was some kind of a Power Apps uh, app project, but we also realized that when we were doing things like PCF, uh, you have to actually go to the UI to go go to the favorites tab and then switch, you know, click the tab over before you can actually push in a PCF control and things like that. So now for those of you, and I'm just using PCF as an example, but in cases, for example, where you need certain features and things like that that need to be enabled in a target environment, you can now do that from uh, from this particular capability. The bet, the difference, as, as Shavkat mentioned, the difference between what we released last month to this month is the ability to also provide the JSON file, right? Which is a significant time saver. So, uh, Andrew, do we also provide the ability to generate the JSON file or no? I uh, don't think so. Mm -hmm. Actually, okay. uh, sorry, yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, we do. Yes. All right, there we go. All right, thanks, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you use the list settings and provide the the path to the JSON file, whatever JSON file you want to uh, create, it will yeah, okay. do the output into the JSON file in a proper formatting. If you don't provide it, it'll be just listed on your screen. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Shafka. Okay. Excellent. So again, again, for those of you who want to go ahead and you know potentially put the settings file into a source control repository or something yeah. of that sort, you now have the ability to go do that. All right. Uh, now. The, the obvious question that will usually come up is now that we can go do this, is this available on CICD? And to that, I'm going to defer to <laughs> defer to Andrew on that part there and say, hey, what's happening yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> it will be. It will be. Yeah, usually, uh, and I think Shafkat showed a diagram in a previous um, uh, meeting. Uh, we do pack CLI changes first, and then we expose uh, functionality in uh, CICD and GitHub Actions. Great, great. All right. Well, thank you so much. This is this is really good. Um, now, uh, some of the other updates that we are bringing in into this release um, is there has been an ask about oh well whether it's a dataverse org or dataverse environment and uh, things are getting a little bit confused. We want to clarify this for users who want to use either or. So we provided this alias. Um, you can do either pack environment list for the list of environments that your tenant is allowed, that your authorization profile that you are connected to, and the, and it'll do. You can do pack environment list (ENV list) or pack org list. It'll give you both ways. So it, that's clarified. Um, at the at the same time, um, we uh, the prior prior name for Power Pages was PA Portals. Um, so yeah, there has been an ask, okay, well, is this PA Portal or is this Power Pages or uh, is it Pages? So we have that clarified as well. We alias that and we're bringing in um, that alias. Uh, you are able to go ahead and use all the verbs that are underneath the PA Portals or Pages or Power Pages uh, uh, noun that we have. Um, you're able to utilize by just saying pack PA portal or pack pages or pack power pages. Uh, so be comfortable with that. Um, another one uh, update we have is the uh, introduction uh, managed identity, Azure managed identity. 
So, um, Andrew, would you like to elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, yeah, we actually we did support managed identity for a while, but we did uh, a little bit more improvements around managed identity. And just to remind, there is a link. Uh, we use Azure Identity Client Library, and recently it added a few interesting features like workload identity, which is good for Kubernetes uh, scenarios, and uh, it can also use Azure CLI identity or uh, grab username password from uh, environment variables. There are like nine different ways it can, I think, even more to fight identity and pack CLI uh, supports uh, all of that. Great. Parthik, you have any question, anything no. you would like to share? Yeah, and again, again, when, when we talk about managed identity support in particular, um, this is primarily to do with build agents, right? This is not about using managed identity with the uh, PAR platform resources in particular, uh, unless unless Matt Matt Barber tells me otherwise, uh, that's not there yet. But this is purely with managed identity uh, components, primarily for the the VMs or the containers that run inside Azure that could then be used by Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions to go ahead and uh, and orchestrate the them as you know uh, configured runners for for your CI CD pipeline. Yeah, so you don't have to use service principle, for example, and manage separate secrets. Yeah. You just use managed identity, and Azure is managing that identity. Exactly. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so next thing, where is this? All right. Um, as I shared earlier in in our agenda, that. Uh, our GitHub Actions for Power Platform. Uh, there has been an update for uh, our makers, advanced makers, our, use, uh, our developers that are uh, using GitHub Actions for Power Platform uh, for their CICD. Um, if things are, if, if you're running into a timeout issue uh, while using a v0, uh, V1, well, what is V1? So when you have an action, Power Platform action that you're using in your uh, GitHub workflow, and v1 is the uh, is the next coming version of the actions right v0 is the current one and when you're using v1 and if you are running into any timeout issues you run into those uh during a setup job when you run the workflow and during a setup job when you run into those timeout issues um we would like to make sure that you install this new action Karthik, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, uh, so all, of, all I was going to say was the fact that, so for example, when you use the V0 version, typically when you're using a, Git, uh, a GitHub Actions workflow, it actually downloads all the artifacts uh, or the actions, if you will, into the, into the current container directly from a GitHub location, all right? And unfortunately, unfortunately, what we've been noticing, and Andrew can talk more about this as well, uh, is, is that uh, it's not been predictable lately uh, and we've kind of raised that issue with uh with the github team and they've kind of been taking their time on responding so in the interim what this uh what this is what this does now is the ability to go ahead and pull the actions uh directly from the uh, repo directly and install it in your runtime all right and then run it all in context so it just runs inside that container once that container goes away action goes away but this is this is not dependent on it going and regularly fetching all the latest actions and things directly from GitHub. It's all the actions get downloaded. You're able to go run, and that so that's that's a big change, a breaking change, if you will, uh, from the uh, from the past paradigm that we've had when it came to GitHub Actions. So just be aware, and and I, and I do mean and I do mean the fact that this is uh you know for those of you, uh, the problems with GitHub usually manifest as a timeout problem, right? Uh, if you've not if you've not witnessed this in your GitHub flows, wonderful. If you have, this is this is our way to address it right now. And it's it is definitely it is definitely a workaround, but it is one way that we will uh, we will at least make sure your workflows continue to keep running. That's all. Yep. I, I want to add on to this is um, I want to reiterate the same thing. This is breaking change. Make sure that your other actions that you are uh, you have, um, if they uh, you know make sure they go through the, the the validation as well. Because if they run into an issue, we want to bring the awareness there. 
All right. Um, I've included the a couple of the links here at the bottom where you can go ahead and read more about the uh, at the GitHub Marketplace for Power Platform Actions. It'll give you a little bit more examples about that. Uh, and then the second link at the bottom is uh, further documentation about this uh, update that we have. So with that do, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about the questions that were submitted uh, prior to the meeting, unless uh, if there's anything Andrew or Karthik would like to add or Matt. The, the only thing I'd like to add is going forward, we'll also have Casey Burke um, on this call as well, because uh, the way our, our organization Hello. has evolved is uh, oh, Casey's on. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> Just listening in. <laughs> All right. Welcome, Casey. <laughs> All right. Thank you, man. Um, I, I didn't really start talking Casey. too much smack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, you know, you know that. Actually, you know what? Now that Casey's on, you know that Casey guy. <laughs> uh, but but the way the way it's going to be working out between Casey and uh, and our team is Casey is response is going to be responsible for a broader, um, you know, the power power apps ALM story in general, uh, specifically because he's also the PM for pipelines. Uh, and what's going to also start happening is, you know, kind of we're we're, we're still part of the greater whole, um, but we'll also be looking at building experiences that will bring code first developer experiences directly to being able to build high fidelity power platform applications directly into the Power App Studio interface. So that's kind of, at the end of the day, from an, from an end, end user standpoint, you will not see the difference. Uh, it's just that we are organizing things accordingly in our in our org as we speak. So one of the things you'll see a lot is in a lot of these kind of developer office hours, you will see a lot of, you know, Casey's team and my team working together and, and kind of co-presenting a lot of these things. So I'm just I just want to kind of preface that as well. As we start seeing a lot of these issues, you, you, you'll you probably see more and more stakeholders coming in and talking about this from an end to end. But just realize we're, we're, we are looking at it from an end to end story perspective. And 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 now you have more ears listening to some of the challenges that you've been running into. All right, sorry, Shepkut, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 excellent. Um, yeah, so this is a forum that you can, you know, freely come and share your thoughts, your ideas, your comments, and and questions and challenges, and you can reach us offline after that as well. And you'll you'll get the recording of this uh, deck and the, uh, the the meeting as well. All right. Uh, so one of the question that was submitted uh, by Mariano, uh, it, this, they want to know about the GitHub Actions uh, complete walkthrough, uh, GitHub Actions for Power Platform. They want to go from a repo to uh, performing all the ALM process from dev to test to prod. Um, the question I have is that we we have the lab that walks you through online. Uh, Marina, if you're here, um, feel free to uh, unmute yourself and we'll be happy to just take that uh, uh, question. Um, I don't think he's here. OK, all right, then we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> uh, so Power Platform Development Extension with Azure Integration by Musa Mois. Um, and I apologize if I am mispronouncing your name, but uh, uh, we'd like to get some more context uh, on this question. What uh, What is it that you would like to uh, get more knowledge on? If you're here, please go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. Yes, no. And, and by, by the way, by the way, I know we just put questions here at Cedar questions and I know because like I know Raphael is on, you know, <laughs> Ralph is on. OK, Jeff is on. All, all these folks are on. So feel, you know, okay. just just because shop cuts present, presenting, you don't have to be nice. OK, you you, you <laughs> can be nice as the way you were nice to me. All right. So please feel to go, feel free to go ahead and, you know, share your thoughts openly. <laughs> oh, this is open forum. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. This is great. Thank you. Right. I mean, D David Yak is there too, so I'm. I, you know, please don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want them to hold back. Go. <laughs> um. All right. Well, and uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, looking at uh, looking for a solution, working through problems and error codes, finding efficiencies in ways of making items. Uh, providing resources to go and practice and learn for ourselves by Ross. 
Um, again, we would like to get some context and we'd be happy to share additional uh, details on this if Ross is here. And does not look like. Um, so we'll we'll just uh, share uh, offline uh, if if they go ahead and uh, provide us the f email. Um, well, well, let's just let's just look at uh, what Ross has just said here. So, so looking through solutions, work through problems, and Eric finding efficiency, and make them. So by face value here, and again, if you know, uh, uh, we are going to share the recording of this. So uh, when Ross does look at this, uh, are we looking at you know if we are looking at ways or thinking about ways to make walking through logs uh, or providing the appropriate kind of uh, error messages. I mean, I, I know Andrew and team spent a lot of time. As a matter of fact, if you if you would have noticed uh, from the early days of PAC CLI to even now, some of the error messages are actually pretty meaningful. Uh, and, and Andrew spends a lot of time I, and, and his team spends a lot of time in trying to make the error messages more intuitive I, instead of saying, you know, error code, correlation ID and go pick up the PAC CLI log from that point. We are you, you'll start seeing more meaningful error messages there. So, um, you know, that's one of the areas that we're investing a lot in. There are other ideas. Um, I actually spoke to the log analytics team yesterday. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm doing a shameless pitch on Copilot, but they're they're looking at some Copilot experiences from a from a log analytics standpoint. That's something that we could potentially look at uh, in the future to kind of help us improve, uh, you know, ascertaining exactly how certain problems manifest where. So all these things that are there. Uh, the other question that I want to go ahead and ask you folks is because I know typically whenever problems get reported uh, and I'm not. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just that uh, typically we, you know, whenever we get these kind of reports coming in, we get a screenshot uh, without the actual logs. My only ask for the team here is, is that when you are, uh, if your logs don't consider have anything proprietary, all right, uh, one, uh, Please share the logs when Andrew and folks reach out to you. Don't post them on the GitHub repo, all right? So my, my, that's one request when it comes to things like error messages and troubleshooting. If you can even cut and paste that piece of text on the log, that would be helpful. Uh, if not, when we do get in touch with you, just send us a log directly to us. Don't post it publicly. So uh, that's my only other ask there is that when you're when you're going ahead and doing time to learn things by yourselves and things like that, just be aware when you're putting stuff on the GitHub repo, it is a public repo, so please, please, please protect your organization, one. But in order for us to be able to go ahead and ascertain exactly what the problems are, uh, the log usually helps us a lot. So when we do reach out to you, we'll we'll let, give you our, you know, you know, some of you already know our emails, thanks to participating here. Just send us an email with the log attached so we can actually really ascertain what the problem is, all right? Or sometimes so, exception ID is enough so we can look yeah. it up um, uh, like cold stack. Exactly. OK. Anyway, uh, anyway, Shaka, I have to drop, but continue, continue the continue the magic here with these folks. All right. Thank, Thank you so much, Karthik. Appreciate it. <clears throat> um, all right. Well, the the last question by Harish was uh, they only provided PCF and SVGs. Um, I would think that they are more referring to the uh, PCF controls. Um, I'm not sure much about uh, SVG, so if they can elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, if not, if about the PCF, um, I believe we have Marcel and Andrew, uh, Marcel here, and we have Andrew. So um, if it's just a, a information about PCF controls, um, they can shed some more light. But uh, yeah, Andrew or Marcel. Um. We didn't do much changes for PCF, but if Marcel knows, we did a little bit like support for Mono Repo. I know Marcel uh, recently uh, put a blog about that. And uh... yeah, yeah, th th basically, some we are starting. We are starting to add Mono Repo support for PCF. So today you already can um, use only one folder to put all your dependencies for PCF controls for different PCF controls. Uh, we will improve in the future, but this is what we have for now. If there are any specific questions or feedback regarding to that, I will be keen to hear. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the comment that I will have now. All right. Well, thank you, Marcel. Thank you, Andrew. 
Um, moving on to um, our AMA section of uh, this uh, office hours, and we have Peter here um, who is uh, going to talk about the FNO applications, the unified developer experience. Um, I will go ahead, let Peter share his screen, and he's going to talk about it. Um, and then you guys can uh, go ahead and, and reach out to, I'm going to post this link where you can start adding your questions um, and that should be from from there on. Let's let's uh, Peter, you right. there? I, I I certainly am. Let me All see. Right. I'm pressing the present in Teams. I mean, you know, you never know whether that works or not. But let's see if that does work. All right. Ah, oh, this is so exciting. There you go. There. All right, <laughs> it works. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it does. Okay, so um, the news is that the unified experience uh, is now in public preview. It has been in private preview for a little while now, uh, five, six months. But now we have taken it to where anyone can join, and we certainly want uh, you to spread this around. Uh, this is this is really good stuff for people who need to integrate uh, the abilities of the whole power platform story, especially the data, uh, the, the dataverse, uh, with all the heavy lifting that you can do in the FNO environment. So we have added this, this number cruncher, this algorithm, this, these 50 million lines of application code to be uh, used by, by Power Apps to, to do the heavy lifting. And the, uh, let's see. So, so what, we, what we have done is we have brought them closer together such that whenever you have a, a license for one, you have a license for both of them. There's a single sign on, there's a single license and that means that you can that you can use uh, either one of these platforms completely seamlessly uh, from one another. But the changes that we have made accrue to more than just a better together because they are better together. But many of the changes that we made are in the FNO environment itself. So for anyone who is using or who has been using the FNO environment, we'll see many many benefits that have been a long way underway, a long time underway, but but now they are actually here. So we have been able with these changes to increase developer productivity, even for people who are only interested for now uh, in the in the FNO stack. So this the real thing to understand here is that we have changed the architecture of how FNO development uh, works. So previously we had these big boxes. Um, typically they were cloud hosted environments or VHDs upon which you did all your development. So you fired up Visual Studio, you go in, you write your X++ code, you compile it, and then you execute it. So as soon as you do that, um, the big machine cranks up, the AOS, the application object server starts up and executes your code, and you can do debugging and testing and all sorts of stuff like that. That story has gone away now. In the future, the story is going to be the one that I'm illustrating on this particular slide that you see in front of you now. So we have split it such that the development experience is going to happen on your laptop now. So you don't need a powerful machine at all to do development, which means that you can develop against any platform, any version, any customer data, anything like that. You can just connect to it. Your machine is going to be a laptop machine that only needs to do compilation. It'll connect to an endpoint, which is that big cloud thing that you see there where the AOS is running. So all X++ execution now happens uh, in, inside that endpoint in, in the cloud somewhere. And that's where the, uh, the customer data lives. All the database uh, action happens there, not on your laptop. And of course, the, the big thing is that this is where Dataverse is installed as well. So we now have a situation where, where you do the, uh, the development on your laptop, you compile and then you deploy your bits into this endpoint and then everything else is taken over from there. Even the debugging experience. Imagine that. So you have your thing running in the cloud and still you're able <clears throat> to provide a high quality debugging story that that attaches to that thing in the cloud and provides a debugging story, which honestly is a lot better than the debugging story we have ever been able to provide before. Which, which the Visual Studio team and the debugger team have, have been very helpful in providing for us. So, you know, I, 
I <clears throat> don't have a lot of time to talk about this uh, now. Uh, we I wanted to make it brief here because we have a demo tomorrow at 10 at the meeting that we have tomorrow internally in Microsoft, uh, where we're going to go into a, a demo of this. I can certainly talk more about it, but I just wanted to say that there is more to come. So we are going into this public preview and anyone can sign up. And let me just for the heck of it paste in the oh, you already had the blog uh, link on your deck, right? Uh, Shafkat? Right, so on that blog, you will see a um, also there is a Viva group and it's easy to sign up. It's at the bottom of that blog item that that uh, Shafkat has the link to. Anyone can sign up there and honestly the more uh, sign up the happier we are, the more input that we will get. But we're not stopping here. We are investigating um, more things that we can do to bring together these two platforms uh, so that they are indeed uh, better together. So yeah, so that was my little spiel on, on that particular thing. Um, we will probably be going into GA Early next year, I would say, then it would be available to to everybody. I don't think that's under any NDA at all. I think that those are just our plans for now. Um, so we have some time to to hear what's going on, to hear your feedback, and act accordingly. Thank so, you, yeah, Peter. That's it, Shafkat, for me. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Peter. No and let me let me share this here. Stop presenting. There you go. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. We have, uh, let's see. Thank you, Peter, for that. And uh, well, we're ready for the questions and it's open forum. So, uh, please, uh, like Karthik mentioned earlier, don't do not hold back. Go ahead and uh, share your comments, feedback, questions, challenges. Uh, you can go out to this link um, and this will take you. Let me share that. It will take you to uh, ask questions and we'll go over the questions that you have. So feel free to go ahead, go ahead and uh, ask your questions. Yeah, or even here, just raise your hand, raise your hand and ask questions. And I think other Microsoft products as well, we might try to find some links <laughs> or point you in the right direction. But mostly it's pro dev tools, uh, like uh, Shafkat was mentioning. Like Pax CLI, Azure DevOps, um, uh, I don't know, plugin registration tool, configuration migration tool, or platform in general. Okay, let's, okay, there we go. PCF virtual react GA update. Yeah, we're not sure. Okay. That one. Who wants to take that? Any any takers? All right. Um, can can uh, so can someone be a little bit more? Um, bring some context around this PCF virtual react GA update. Um, what in what are we uh, look? What are you were you looking for? Okay, for documentation, I can paste a few links in a chat. Documentation. Okay. Um, Ralph, thank you. Okay. Oh, the GA day. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, take that offline, and we'll. Uh, have uh, additional updates later. Um, Microsoft Power Platform CLI Command Groups. Article. Right. Uh, I think there's a hand raised here by let's see, Betim. Hello. Yeah, hi there. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I think I wrote something about PCF. And this virtual React GA date is related to the platform libraries that I asked in the chat. I, I didn't write this one for the GA date, but it just related. Okay. Okay. Andrew or uh, anyone wants to take this? Okay. All right. We'll, uh, we'll go on to the next one. 
And let's see. The next question we have is what is the current official doc link for using the CLI for DevOps and GitHub? OK, um, you can simply go to actually we'll share that in the chat and there is I'm going to do that right now. All right, so you can just go there and uh, that will give you more information about um, PAX CLI for, and then that's the starting point for uh, getting into a DevOps or uh, Azure DevOps uh, build tools or GitHub Actions. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and take care of this. All right, I hope I answered that question. Uh, let's see, Pervez uh, is asking, it would be great if the generation of the deployment settings file could be integrated into the solution export unpack operation somehow rather than having to be invoked separately. Is it something that's feasible or already in pipeline? Also, it would be nice to be able to generate parameterized deployment settings file to enable them to be environment agnostic rather than have a single file per environment please um all right so talking about the deployment settings file do we have andrew here anyone who wants to take this so i i actually have a quick question about what i think is being asked here mm -hmm. um, is specifically with the term parameterization are you actually asking for it to have the ability to take a parameter list versus actually populating the settings file on import and have it just merge into an established settings file? No, sorry. So what I was thinking was maybe um, if the deployment settings file, rather than having a, um, a static text representing the connection ID, if it could be some sort of token, which we could then pass in a value for um, from an environment variable, for example, um, in, in a GitHub action or um, uh, so, a part, uh, an Azure DevOps pipeline. Right. So, in, uh, a connection reference isn't an. A connection reference would be specific to. So, a connection reference is made up of two parts one that is managed and one that is unmanaged. Okay. Um, the connection reference I uh, the the connection ID that I've got to get the we, we use the same words for lots of things with little different tails. So the connection ID that is related to it is actually what you're setting in the deployment settings file. So that that is essentially what's going on. Are you are you asking that you'd like us to support the idea that that could be variable? At yeah, runtime. Exactly that, yeah. At, yeah, at runtime. Exactly. Yeah. So then that would mean I would I need to have a separate file per environment. You would I, still I mean, need to have a separate file per environment because you'd have to establish the connection instance. Well, I, I was asking about this in the chat as well because uh, to me it seems like an unnecessary step to deal with the settings file. When I could easily put the connection ID from the uh, runtime to my source control alongside with the connection reference definition, and then I wouldn't have to touch my pipelines to pick up the settings file and pass it over to the PAC CLI or or the package deployer. So that would make it easier for people to do the hmm. proper ALM setup. Uh, they would just grab the connection ID from the environment as soon as they create it as part of the environment creation process uh, when they need to interactively authenticate the connections. And uh, after that, they could just store it in the source control right alongside with the connection reference and we, we could skip the whole deployment settings file. Oh, OK, you're talking about actually encoding it into the solution. Yes. Ah, OK. Um, so yeah, th there was we, we went back and forth on this. Um, I, I, I see what you're asking now. Um, the connection. Uh, 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 technically, it's possible. Let me just say it that way. Technically, it is possible to do. Um, it wouldn't be something we exported, though. Uh, the connection ID, the connection instance ID is intended to not 
be transported through an ALM process. Um, because it is intended to be something that is very specific to an environment. OK. Um, the import logic today. I'd have to go back and look at the actual server code, but the import logic today uh, expects that that is not in the solution. I do not believe it's actually read as part of solution import. Uh, it's expected to be passed in as a deployment setting or post. But supporting it as if you were to go in and edit the solution file afterwards and add it in, uh, I think that would, I think the system would actually accept that. I, again, I have to go look at the the actual code that's that's dealing with that to to answer that confidently. But I I but wonder what ask. the difference is. I I wonder what the difference is. I.e., whether or not you're passing it into a deployment settings file that's environment specific versus uh, so, uh, versus passing it through a solution. So. So the thing is that uh, I really would like to skip all of the manual steps that we need to do when we spin up a new environment. Uh -huh. And if I could uh, include the connection to uh, a solution as a component, and I could reference that ID, which would be consistent across environments in a connection reference, uh, I would just then point the users to go to a specific page in the right. makepowerapps.com to authorize the API hub connection. Right. And that would simply skip all the need to do anything manual during the deployment. I could deploy the whole solution, including connections and stuff. And then I could just point the users who need to authorize those connections so, uh, so they can sign in interactively. Yeah, so the, the, the long answer, that there is a very long answer to that. The very short answer is, that would require us to have a shared connection concept at the tenant level. And then it would require every user to actually have connections uh, and have them pre-established someplace else, uh, which would then get you into a state where the same credentials were used for different environments in different places. Now, in some cases that may make sense, but the 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 idea of sharing that across the tenant has been resisted uh, based on a you know you've got a tenant that spans the EU and the United States and now we've leaked data across data boundaries um, so that yeah, well, that's uh, that's what yeah. the pushback is on it honestly it is something oh, my, that my, particular scenario has been discussed though well, my my problem really is that when I'm deploying a new environment, someone has to like I I can automate the creation of the environment, yep. but someone has to go there before before I deploy anything, and yes. they need to create the connections manually. Yes. Then they need to take those connection IDs and store it in the deployment settings JSON, and then I can start deploying anything uh, because otherwise the flows would get broken. Uh, and I would really like to skip that. I would like to prepare the environment and deploy everything. And then I want to have someone to authorize the, the connections, but I cannot do that today. So if we I can were chime in here too, Matt. But what, one last thing, and then we'll, we'll uh, then Casey have at it. If we were to restrict that to a specific geography, i.e., it that would work if everything you did in Europe or everything you did in India or North America. Would that be satisfactory for that kind of scenario? This this is an area that we have a lot of problems with, frankly. I'm not trying to belittle it. For me, yeah, that would that would work. Okay. All right. Uh, Casey. Yeah. So so we do have the environment boundary with connections, right? So that connection ID is going to change in every single environment. It's going to be a different GUID, right? We we can't break the data boundary, which is an environment. And that's kind of why you don't have that that tenant level construct. And you know, Matt was alluding to maybe there's a way to do that in a compliant way if we stayed within geo boundaries. But regardless, the reason it's required is part of a deployment setting as part of the import operation. And actually, let me take a step back before that. The reason it's not exported 
is because it's always going to be a different GUID in every environment. So it's not part of the solution file. It wouldn't make any sense to put it in there. But now when you go to the import operation, we pass it with the import operation. And you know this rep represents itself in PAC CLI as a deployment settings file, right? Uh, we do this on manual solution import too. We generate the payload, pass it along with the import request. And the reason it's part of the import request is because if you don't pass a valid connection ID, so like what you're referring to, if the user goes in and authenticates it later after the deployment, a bunch of manual steps are going to be required. And the reason is because, well, it actually has a lot to do with Power Automate and the, the cloud flows. There's a lot of logic associated with the activation of a flow and requiring a valid connection. So when you import a solution, it uses that connection to go check all these different things, right? And it activates the flow based on that. So if you passed in an invalid or unauthenticated connection, then all that stuff is just going to be off and you're going to have to go fix it all up later. So hopefully that kind of describes, you know, why it's, yeah. it's uh, implemented in the, in the way that it is. I wonder, I, I wonder if we could solve, I, so what I'm hearing is your your base ask, let's strip it all back. What I'm hearing here is your base ask is you don't you don't want to have to edit a deployment settings file on deployment. That that's kind of what I'm hearing is your base ask. And your proposed solution is a consistent connection ID that is managed through the deployment. And as Casey and I have, have both hit, we, we don't think we can do that. Um, yeah, but yeah. I, I, I wonder if you, we can thank you very much for the but but I wonder if we provided you a tokenization concept where instead of having to go open source edit a file, you could essentially pass in a set of parameters that were merged into the deployment settings at runtime, i.e. as part of your build process. Yeah, I think that, that would be something oh, yes. that would work for me. So that's kind of like local variable definition within the pipeline. And then, feed then, it then, in. I, then I, yeah, then I can use things like environment variables in the in the pipeline definition or, or the uh, uh, the environment settings from GitHub Actions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could you can do that now. Uh, in, in the fact that you can have checked out the deployment settings file and you can do a local edit without committing it back. It's just if we could make that a little easier for you. Um, so anyway, all right, yeah, that's so an idea. My specific. My specific scenario is that I'm deploying like tens of dev boxes every day uh, mm -hmm. and they should be like exact copy of the environment, but based off the source control, but I cannot effectively deploy the dev box in order to be ready, like completely ready for the developer to start working unless uh, I go there before the deployment is initiated and I create those connections, which really makes this process uh, kind of broken because I cannot automate that. So uh, if I could story. share the connection IDs between environments, that would really help in this scenario. Um, could I interrupt? Um, my apologies, uh, folks. We only have last two minutes. Uh, this is interesting uh, discussion and very important. If you guys uh, could uh, drop us a, a follow up on an email or uh, uh, drop us the scenario, uh, I think we can move on to the next uh, questions that we, since we're last two minutes. I apologize for uh, cutting you guys, uh, but uh, thank you so much. Um, so we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, I hope uh, this is all good, Matt. Yeah, go right ahead. I understand. Um, all right. We, we so can the talk next about question... this for a couple hours. <laughs> Not get, get... <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Uh, there's a couple of votes here. Uh, can you give us an update on the roadmap of Power Apps Test Engine project, and most precisely on the support of model-driven apps, please? Um, anything you want to elaborate on the test engine part? Uh, you want to take a shot, Andrew, on this one? I'm not sure about test engine, but recently we did add a uh, uh, PAC CLI test verb, uh, which uh, uses uh, Playwright uh, test um, engine. Uh, it's still in the preview, and uh, we'll keep working on it. Feel free to try it out and give us some feedback. Uh, next one, what are the current plans for Canvas unpack process canvas apps to come out of preview um go ahead andrew 
Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure when it's going to come out of preview, but uh, I can talk uh, to uh, the team who uh, owns uh, this one. All right, so we'll follow up on that. Yeah, we'll uh, follow I up think we that. addressed this. And last yeah. one for like plugin, I wanted to talk a little bit about, and I pasted it in the chat. So uh, in plugin yeah. registration tool, we do support different way of profiling now. Uh, specifically designed for uh, plugin packages, uh, a new way of uh, uploading uh, plugins using NuGet packages. And the way you turn it on, uh, uh, if you go to PRT tool, there is app settings file and uh, there is a legacy profile setting. Uh, you can set it to false and it will use a different way um, uh, of profiling plugins, which is not using uh, plugin profiler solution. So you don't have to install the solution. All right. Um, yeah, thank you so much. We're at the top of the hour um, and really appreciate it. It was a very good session. We want to see you guys again. Thank you for asking these questions. Keep going with your uh, questions, comments, ideas. Um, if you'd like to contribute to any of that uh, additional GitHub uh, workflows, yeah. uh, share that. And um, uh, also go ahead and uh, send us your questions. We'll share this recording and the deck. Thank you so much for uh, attending. Um, we will see you until next time, uh, next month. We'll see you. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.